Now, if we talk about monitoring systems versus control systems for a moment, it's important to make a distinction between the two. Typically, both can be done in Ignition, and we presented a recent webinar that Don mentioned at the beginning talking about remote monitoring specifically. For monitoring, read-only connections can be utilized to provide a layer of protection. When control is being done, that's not really an option. Security becomes much more important since there's, well, there's, there's really more at stake. Uh, and so a lot of monitoring systems use protocols and technologies that really aren't intended for robust real-time bi-directional communications using software that's written with control as a core functionality, not as an afterthought, helps a lot in the long run. Something unique about Ignition is that, and, and this, is a, this is a key, this is, a, this is really part of the crux of this. Um, you know, it, it's unique about Ignition that any Ignition project with the appropriate network permissions and architecture can be controlled remotely. And if you think about that for a second, that means if you're running Ignition today, and you set up one of these architectures, you will immediately have remote access to Ignition. We'll talk about the architectures in just a second, and I have a few uh, diagrams, but uh, this is something that really is um, relatively unique about how easy it is to get going with Ignition. If you don't already have Ignition installed, uh, you can easily spin it up and uh, connect up to existing data sources and provide a remote access solution as well. But all of this brings me to security. Any system that's accessible and provides remote control needs to have a focus on security. Typically, the easiest way to set up remote access is to simply set up a VPN connection. VPNs, as we, I used to have to explain what VPNs are. At this point, everybody knows what a VPN is because we've all been using them for a while. Uh, they're a great option to protect your network traffic when you have remote access uh, users who are going to private network resources. Uh, VPN connections come with that authentication and a uh, layer of encryption built in. Uh, in addition to going over a VPN connection, uh, basic authentication to whatever application you're monitoring is almost always a very important security step. You know, username or password or integration with uh, external identity providers, which we'll talk a little bit more about here. In addition, a growing number of companies are using two-factor authentication as well, uh, whether that connection is over a VPN or a direct connect. Uh, while it's easy to put your Ignition system online, as I mentioned before, before you do that, you need to think through your security options. A wide variety of security features are available within Ignition directly, which I'll give you an overview of next. One of those best practices, the first step that we recommend, in addition to any VPN connection that you might have, uh, regardless of if you have one or not, we recommend turning on encryption for your data, especially if you have those remote connections. Encrypting your data helps prevent the data from being monitored or captured by bad actors. The Ignition platform supports uh, SSL and TLS for encryption. Specifically, it supports the latest HTTPS uh, encryption technologies uh, standards. And so by default, it has TLS 1.2 and 1.3. And uh, for those of you who are uh, really technical on the security side, uh, we have a whole variety of cipher suites and we even give you access to enable and disable your own set of cipher suites there inside the platform. So uh, we normally abide when you install Ignition by what are seen as some of the security best practices. Um, while still being somewhat permissible for device connections. If you want to lock it down almost entirely, you can absolutely do that, uh, and you can set that up inside Ignition directly. These standards, uh, specifically TLS 1.2 and 1.3, those are used to keep internet connections secure. So if you're not so familiar with this, right, uh, they're, they're one of the core technologies with internet connections from your browser to websites. Uh, it helps keep it secure by safeguarding any sensitive data that's shared between two systems. It's what banking websites use, for example, and it's used and available directly inside Ignition. Also, the Ignition Perspective module has support for federated identity providers and standards. SAML 2.0, OIDC are both supported in Ignition directly. These protocols are identity provider protocols and let you use systems like Ping, Okta, Active Directory Federated Services, Duo, and a number of these other identity providers. 
federated identity providers often support features like single sign-on and two-factor authentication. And in fact, that inductive automation, everything that we do with Ignition or just in our organization is protected by two-factor authentication wherever we can. So if you have any other web apps that are using single sign-on, you can normally just configure Ignition to use that same set of single sign-on, both for the apps and for the web browser visualizations, and it will tie into the rest of the infrastructure. Perspective also has a rich permission model that lets you choose different ways to secure Perspective apps. If you are expanding remote access to more of your workers, it is very important to have specific access controls for who is allowed to do what. Because no software is fully secure on its own, you have to secure infrastructure as well. Users should take some basic steps to protect their Ignition installations and their overall architecture. We put together a basic set of best practices around this, and this is a quick security checklist for Ignition. As I just mentioned, and it was important enough to give it its own slide, the encrypted communications is key. You wanna set that up right away. Uh, using a valid certificate either from inside the organization or from a uh, certificate authority online. Device OPC and MQTT security needs to be thought through. Uh, so if you're doing integration for any devices or OPC uh, or MQTT, uh, you'll want to turn on encryption where you can and where you can't. Some devices don't support that. You'll want to think through the network architectures and see if it makes sense to segment things off. Security zones are important to, for different network segments as well. Application security needs to be carefully considered. Audit logging should be turned on, and that's very easy to do in Ignition. You just hit a checkbox and it's essentially ready to go, but you wanna make sure you do that uh, so you can see who is doing what at what times. Uh, database security is, uh, it should be thought through as well. You can encrypt the communication back and forth. You can also optionally encrypt data at rest with most databases, and there's username and password and other security items for different tables and create permissions and a variety of other things. Platform security for the actual operating system should be thought through. Active Directory, authentication sources, identity providers like we were talking about a moment ago, and then a plan for software updates. Is there a patch cycle? And if there is a patch cycle, how much downtime is that going to cause? And does it make sense to have Ignition's redundancy, for example? So if you take down the main server, the system doesn't go down because the backup uh, takes over while the patches are being run. This is important enough that we actually wrote up a 14-page document detailing these best practices in these areas. You can find that in the Ignition Security Hardening Guide in the Handouts area of the GoToWebinar console here or you can find it on our resources section on our website. We also recommend consulting with your IT department for specific security recommendations. Ignition is based on modern IT standards and is normally very friendly to IT security policies. Now, this is a, an example of a typical architecture with what we were just talking about. Uh, the on-site system right there might have Ignition, and Ignition's either connected up to an existing set of things. If you already have Ignition installed, it might look like that where it's connected to PLCs and databases. If you don't have Ignition installed, you can just put it right uh, alongside what you already have and do the same thing. It could either connect to another SCADA system and pull data from there, or it could connect directly to PLCs, uh, databases, Ignition is very good at connecting to a whole variety of systems. And then if you want the remote access over a VPN, as I mentioned, this is one of the options here. Uh, setting up that VPN connection just looks like this. You have that firewall there. Um, you have the VPN tunnel that's coming out here. And then this is going to be your remote system right there. This is, uh, this is me sitting from home in this case um, and connect it up over to our work network or office network that has a bunch of PLCs and Ignition uh, sitting there and gives me remote access. And as mentioned, this is something as long as you have a VPN set up and you have the appropriate network routing rules, this is something that uh, it makes Ignition accessible in about, you know, 10 seconds. So it's it's very quick to, to, to do this if you have the IT rules in place. If you're going to do that, we always recommend going through that security hardening guide, uh, of course. The other option, sometimes folks don't want to use a VPN. And so what they'd prefer to do is have Ignition sitting somewhere accessible from 
anyone who has a mobile device or a computer without going to uh, log into a VPN connection at all. So just pull up a web address and be able to get into the system. Uh, this can be a really good design as well. Uh, and generally, if you're doing that, although technically you could put the main ignition server online, you could do it with port forwarding. Generally speaking, best practices are to have a server that is sitting on the cloud that has a secure connection back to that ignition server inside the network. Uh, and this is uh, this has become a really common design paradigm for a lot of folks who are doing this type of communication, where uh, data is pushed out, um, and then it can be bidirectional there, where uh, control is coming back there. Um, but security precautions are taken, and measures are in place at the steps along the way here. 